The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had them sit down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we honor the saints. They are people just like us who actually have experienced difficulties in their lives, temptations, even experienced sin and their struggle with it. Yet they triumphed. They were in heaven. One of my favorite examples of the triumph of the saints is St. Augustine. If you read his confessions, you would know he lived a very colorful life. He was teaching in a pagan university and promoting things that were against Christianity. He had a very saintly mother, St. Monica, who prayed and probably wore holes in her kneecaps from praying for him. He had an illegitimate son that was given by his living housekeeper. And yet he would finally experience awake and an awakening to all the ways of the world that he had been consumed by. He walked into the church one day where Bishop Ambrose was preaching and God spoke to him through the lips of Bishop Ambrose and he had a conversion. Since then, St. Augustine has become one of our, our greatest church fathers, a very prolific writer, and truly a saint. And he did it even though he had passed through the difficulties of life because of God's mercy. The saints exist because of God's mercy. And so, it's not about spending eternity in a nice place. That's not what being a saint is about. A saint is about someone who really wants to see God and be cherished by him and have a relationship with him. St. John had this great vision, however, that we see in the book of Revelations today. He had a vision of a great multitude What's he saying? There are lots of saints up there. Lots of them. They're not having a population issue. The devil probably is, but not the saints. They, he had a vision, John, a multitude which no one could count from every nation, race, and people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing their white robes. You all have worn those white robes in your baptism. 
And it is one of your duties as a saint to maintain the integrity of that pristine quality of the baptismal robe you experienced when you were set free from original sin and brought into the life of grace in Jesus Christ. All Christians are called to be saints. We are all called to be saints. It's an invitation that has been given to us. Saints are persons who are in heaven. Some are officially canonized by the church. Others are not. They may be anonymous, but they're there. They don't care how anonymous they are because they are with the Lord and they're not anonymous to him. They may be anonymous to us, but all the angels and saints are very well acquainted with them as they share the glory of God. They have lived heroically virtuous lives. They've offered their lives for others, meaning the possibility of martyrdom or simply being worn out by raising a family and suffering for the sake of the children and the grandchildren. They are these saints that are worthy of imitation. They're worthy of imitation from us. The church has three steps for sainthood. The first step is called the venerable. It's the title given to a deceased person who is recognized formally by the Pope as having lived a heroically virtuous life and even possibly offered their life for the sake of others. The second step to sainthood is beatification, where they're recognized as blessed, and at least there's record of one miracle that's attested to the candidate from his intercessions and recognized in heroic virtue, offering his life for the Lord. What does that mean? The intercessions. In other words, they're, they're considered, they're, they're in this beatified state and it's solidified by the fact that someone asked for that saint's help and it was given to them. There's a lot of records of John Paul II, people who met him experiencing this and after death, miracles happening connected to prayers that were raised up to him. In that case, he passed that first stage of beatification. And finally, there's the stage of being canonized. It requires a second miracle after beatification. And there are plenty of these saints canonized in heaven. How can we become saints? We must keep our eyes on the prize, the prize of the virtue of heaven, eternal union with the Holy Trinity in heaven. This, this is happening because we have the sacramental of the life in the church. That's the proper path to stay in union with Jesus in the sacraments, to experience the Mass, to treasure the Eucharist, and make sure it becomes the food of saints for us on our way to sanctity. The sacrament of reconciliation, as I can suppose that St. Augustine took a lot of time using, and at the same time, as a great bishop, he probably heard many confessions to help people out of his sympathy because he knew what they had gone through and calling on the mercy of God. And so we should eagerly hasten as pilgrims to advance in our faith and rejoice in the exalted members of the church, the saints. Strive to emulate them. Look at some of the wisdom they had. If you want to read up on the saints, a good place to start is look up your patron saint. You might find a lot of connections there. I strongly advise that. Ask your patron saint for help. Through the saints, God gives us strength and a good example to assist us in our frailties. And so we ask for their intercessions 
one of the one of the examples of the, these intercessions, I know for a fact in our family history, my grandfather had my mother's godparents pray to Teresa of the Little Flower about her future spouse. And of course, one of the hallmarks of St. Teresa of the Little Flower is to testify to the fact that she heard the prayer, somehow a rose shows up. And so my, my dad, my, my grandfather, prayed that my mother would find a good man. And one day, my father showed up at the door of my mother's house with a rose in his hand. His seat was, his, his uh, future was ever sealed there at that time. And my mother had told me many times that she credited their encounter and their relationship to Teresa of the Little Flower. And she has the proof of five children to prove it. Some good, some not so good. Remember that the canonized saints are responsible for miracles, and when we ask them for help, it comes. We think of the Blessed Virgin Mary and how much traveling she does all over the world to intercede for us, and even allows her, herself to be appearing in front of people. You think of St. Joseph and the way he supports family life and fatherhood and marriage. And of course, I already mentioned John Paul II. The, the saints can go on. I can list them forever. Our pilgrimage, however, is to be the people that longs to see the face of God. Dream about heaven. Think about heaven. Ask the saints to help you. Jesus would say, blessed are the poor of spirit because they experience sainthood by being unattached to worldliness and know the dire need for God. Blessed are those who mourn because they're the ones who hurt because of the sinfulness of the world and pray that these sin sinfulnesses would be quelled. Blessed are the meek because the saints look for strength the restraint to the look for strength for the restraint of anger and adversity and discouragement and seek their strength from God. Blessed are the hungry because they thirst and strive for union with God in his kingdom, using this time here on earth as leverage to get to the higher kingdom. Blessed are the pure of heart because the saints strive for a freedom from lust and from all evils of the passions. Oh yes, today is our day to rejoice and be glad because your reward will be great in heaven. Resurrection, see good